All right, so we're back to number three here, and this looks very wordy and perhaps very complicated. So let's take it slowly, and again, it's pushing you to understand how the curves will shift based on each of, of these particular changes. So it starts out like this. Which of the following set of events would most likely cause an increase in the price of a new house? An increase in the price of a new house. So let's walk through the sequence of events. Higher wages for carpenters. All right. Well, higher wages for carpenters will push the supply curve back. That'll be rental raise price. Higher wood prices. Wood goes into building houses. That's going to push the supply curve back. All right. Continuing. Increase in consumer incomes. Now, housing is a normal good. I mean, when incomes go up, people tend to buy more houses. So if there's an increase in consumer income, that's going to increase the demand for houses. That's going to put upward pressure on price. All right. Last one, higher, apart, higher apartment rents. All right. So if rents go up, people look to buy because renting becomes basically too expensive relative to purchasing a house and paying a mortgage yourself. So if rents are going up, it's going to again increase the demand for houses because rents are actually a substitute for owning a home. So that's going to push price up. Next one, increases in population and expectations of higher housing prices. Well, if there are more people going after a fixed stock of housing, that's going to increase the demand for housing. It's going to push the price up. Again, more people competing for a scarce resource. And lastly, expectations of higher house prices in the future. Well, if we anticipate that the price of houses is going to go up, then better to buy now. All right, so that's going to have an immediate impact on demand now, going to shift demand up. In other words, every one of those scenarios that I just read is going to put upward pressure on price. Whether it's a decrease in the supply curve caused, let's say, by higher wages for carpenters or higher wood prices because those are inputs into the supply of housing or all the demand factors we talked about. All right, uh, let me see. Increase in consumers' incomes, increase in the, uh, the rent for apartments, increases in the population, and increases in higher prices in the future. All of those are going to increase the demand for housing today and put upward pressure on price. So every one of those factors that I just read to you are going to put upward pressure on price. The answer is going to be A, all right? But let's just make sure you're clear. So let me take another one. Let's take C, for example. And as soon as we get an offsetting effect, we don't know which one's going to dominate. So look at C. It says lower wages for carpenters. Well, if the wages of carpenters fell, the supply curve would shift out, right? And that would put downward pressure on price. And then it says higher wood prices. Well, higher wood prices would put supply curve, push it back and put upward pressure on price. Which one dominates? I don't know. So immediately with those two factors, we have one pushing price down, one pushing price up. We don't know which one's going to dominate. Immediately, a price effect is ambiguous. Okay? So I can actually stop there and eliminate C. Let me go to B, for example. It says lower wages for carpenters, downward pressure on price. Lower wood prices, downward pressure on price, right? Both lower wages for carpenters and lower prices for wood are, are go into the inputs in making the house. That affects the supply curve, causes the supply curve to shift out, and that's going to put downward pressure on price. Again, you can eliminate B immediately because all these factors have to push price up, and those two are going the wrong way. Lastly, D, it says higher wages for carpenters. Well, we know that's going to push the supply curve back, push prices up. Lower wood prices. Again, it's going to push the supply curve out because the key input into making houses is obviously wood, and that push out in the supply curve is going to put downward pressure on price, and we don't know how much which one's going to offset the other, or we don't know how high the wages were for these carpenters or how low the price of wood fell. All we know is they're offsetting forces. It's going to make the result ambiguous, and therefore you can eliminate D, C, and B because of those ambiguous changes. We don't know which one's dominating. All right, so the answer to number three is A, because every one of those factors is causing the price to go up, whether it be a demand shift or a supply shift. All right, let's stop at three, take a break, and we'll come back for four.